this is the fifth part of the calculus um, videos and in this video I'm gonna go through how to find the equation of the tangent and normal so I'm gonna do them simultaneously together even though usually the questions either ask for tangent or the normal so be careful I'm doing them together just to um, for the interest of time but in exams they will ask for one of them only um, so the equation of the tangent and the normal is um, basically the essence of uh, the graphical representation of calculus. So there's the application part of calculus, um, but then the graphical representation looks into, well, if you have a curve, and we always have the issue of, well, I don't know the gradient of the curve because it changes everywhere. And so we can only find the gradient at a specific point. So if I have the point here, to find the gradient of the point, I'll have to draw a tangent. A tangent is a line that only touches um, uh, the line at one point. So it's only touching at this point. And the gradient of this line is what you find using calculus. So this is where we differentiate and then we substitute, say this is, for example, negative 3. Um, so your substitute negative 3 in the derivative is going to give you the gradient of this tangent. Now the next step is to actually find the full equation. And the equation we're looking at is y equals to mx plus c. Um, so this is the equation of the tangent. The normal is, a, is also a line, but instead of it being um, related to this point in such a way, it's actually... It goes through the point, but it's 90 degrees to your tangent. So that's the normal of um, the tangent. So that's another line we're going to find. Now, a couple of things I want to tackle in this video is to actually go through the process of finding the tangent and also writing the final equation, not only in y equals mx plus c, but also in the form of ax plus by plus c or plus d where these numbers a, b, and c are integers. Okay, so they're integers. They could be positive and negative whole numbers. They are not fractions. Um, so I'm gonna go through those one by one. So I'm just gonna go through a couple of examples for the interest of time, um, just to fit in within 10 minutes, but you could practice the same exact procedure with any equation. So let's say I have a, we'll go simple, let's say I have y equals to 5x squared plus um, x. And I want the, the question says, find the equation of the tangent um, at x equals to 3. So you're gonna first want to find the derivative. And you're gonna, actually before we find the derivative, just so that I can follow through from what I've been doing in class, um, it's much better if we have the x and the y, and you'll notice why. Now sometimes they're gonna give you the y coordinate, sometimes they won't, so you'll have to find it. So you look at the question, you're like, oh, I'm missing the y. So first step, you want to find the y-coordinate. Remember, to find the y-coordinate, you'll have to substitute in the original. So y is equal to 5, and then you're going to substitute the 3 plus the 3 again. So you're going to do 3 squared, which is 9. Add 3. 5 times 9 is 45, and then plus 3 will be 48. So the coordinate is actually 3, 48. Lovely, we found y. Now we're going to um, find the gradient. That's the second step. So we know how to find the gradient because remember, finding the derivative, finding uh, differentiating at a point is called finding the gradient. So I'm going to go dy by dx. I don't need to simplify this. Look at it. Do I need to move any denominators up or anything? Do I need to expand? Not really. It's all simplified. So just going to immediately start. So this will be 10x and then plus 1. So the derivative of this is 1. Then I'm going to substitute at x equals to 3. 
so 10 3 plus 1 is equal to 31. So the gradient is 31. Which means that when I have my form of y equals to mx plus c, my m is actually 31, which is quite a big number. But y equals 31x plus c. Now, the only thing missing is the c. Remember that when you write an equation, it has to be in the form, for example, y equals to 5x minus 2, for example, or 5x plus 2. Um, this is what it looks like. It's not just finding the c, it's not just finding the m. You need to find both of them, and then you need to write it as y equals to something x plus something else. So we need to find c, that's what we're missing. And the way to find it, there are a couple of ways to do it. I'm just going to use one method, and this is to substitute these coordinates inside and then rearrange to find C. So now instead of Y, I'm going to write 48. And instead of X, I'm going to use 3. So this is equal to 31 times 3 plus C. So I'm going to solve this equation. So we have... 48 equals to, well, 31 times 3 will be 93, and then that's plus C. Now, to solve this, we're going to have to subtract 93 from both sides. And so on this side, I'm going to end up with um, negative 45 is equal to c. So c is equal to negative 45. Great, we found c. This is not, our fi not uh, the final answer. The final answer will be y equals to 31x minus 45. So that's the equation of the tangent. Now if they want it in the form y equals mx plus c, you're going to leave it. If they say we want it in the form ax plus by plus c, all you have to do is move everything to one side. Now this is easy in this case, sometimes when you end up with a fraction it gets a bit complicated. So it's pretty simple and it seems a bit stupid to actually have, but all you have to do is you can move all of these to the other side or move y to the other side, um, so, or subtract y from both sides. So on the left hand side you'll end up with 0 and on this side you'll end up with 31x minus y minus 45. Now this is the same as, if you're a bit confused, it's the same as saying Oops, it's the same as saying minus y. All I did was swap the negative 45 and y because we like to keep the x's and the y in the same order. And so if the question says, well, I need ax plus by plus c equals to 0, well, I have my 0 on one side. The a is whatever is stuck to the x, the coefficient of x, so that's 31. The b is the coefficient of y, which is negative 1. And the C is just the other variable, which is, um, sorry, the other const the, la the constant, which is negative 45. Um, so that's you just writing it in this form. Again, if you have fraction, it's slightly more complicated. Not impossible, but there's one extra step you'll have to do. Um, so this is our equation, y equals to 31 minus 31x minus 45. So this is the tangent. Now, if we wanted to find the normal, we're going to follow the same steps, except that we found the gradient at 31. Now, the question didn't ask for the normal, but let's say it did. Let's say part B was finding the normal. So the gradient is 31. The gradient at x equals to 3 was 31. The, ten, the gradient of the normal is you finding what we call the negative reciprocal. The negative reciprocal means you're doing two steps at the same time. One is you change the sign. And the second is that you are going to flip the fraction or reciprocate. So that's the more sophisticated word. Now 31 doesn't look like a fraction, but it's actually 31 over 1. So 5, 31 over 1. If I flip, it's going to be 1 over 31, and if I change the sign, it's going to be a negative. So the, norm, the gradient of the normal is actually negative 1 over 31. 
So on the side example, if I have 2 over 3, then the gradients of the normal will be negative 3 over 2. If I have negative 1 over 2, then the gradient of the normal is, well, I'm going to flip it, and then instead of a negative, it's going to be a positive, which is basically just 2. So just keep that extra step in mind. Now, once you've found the gradients of the normal, you're going to follow the same exact step as we did here, but you're going to get a different C. Um, so we have y equals to negative 1 over 31 x plus c. But then instead of the y, we're going to put in the 48. And I forgot to mention, that's why we find it in the beginning. So 48. And instead of the x, I'm going to put 3. And then I'm going to put a plus c. And we solve it in such a way, so we have 48 equals to negative 3 over 31 plus C. Just going to bring this this side. So, um, we end up with... Um, having to move this to the other side, so we have 48, or adding 3 over 31 on both sides, so we have plus 3 over 31, and equals to C. Now, we don't like to simplify things, in, as in write things in decimals and math, so I will keep this as a fraction. Now, we are free to keep them as decimals, but do keep them in as many decimal places, but it's definitely discouraged because your equation will not be accurate. Um, so if you have time, do practice writing things and keeping them in fraction form or use the calculator to help you keep them in fraction form. So this is quite a complicated example. Um, it's I've picked quite weird numbers. Um, so it's still not impossible to do, so I'm going to change 41 to a fraction over 31. So this is basic uh, IGCSE stuff. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 31. So in this case, I'm going to end up with um, 48 times 31, which is 1,488 over 31 plus... 3 over 31, which is equal to C. All I did was change the denominator to have, so that they're both the same denominator, and now I can add the fraction. So 1,488 1, plus 3 will give me 1,491 over 31. Now, this does not simplify, um, which means C is equal to 1,491 over 31. So the equation of the normal the equation of the normal is um, y equals to negative 1 over 31 x plus 1491 over 31. Again, don't worry too much. You won't get as weird ex um, expressions. It's just because I picked a random x equals to 3, that's why this showed up. Usually they'd give you nice numbers and you'd end up with a nice gradient and a nice uh, c value. And they only ask for the normal if it's actually a nice equation to have. But this is good because now if I want, this is the y equals mx plus c, but if they want it in a different form, which is the ax plus by plus c, Usually, you want both these terms to have the same denominator because I can combine them now. Uh, keep in mind that this is a negative 1 times x, so I can bring this together. Negative 1 times x is just negative x. Um, and because they have the same denominator, I can put them under the same denominator. 91. Okay, now we can't do as we did before where we just move the y because the ax plus by plus c equals to zero. Remember the condition was that all these numbers, all the coefficients, have to be integers. Um, and right now, if I just move the y, these are not integers, so I'm breaking the rule. So in order to make it into an integer, I need to get rid of this division. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply it. And this is over 1. So you're going to end up with 31 times y equals to this whole expression times 1. So it stays the same. So now we got rid of the division sign. And now we can move the y as we did before. So this left hand side will be 0, and this will be negative x. I'm just going to plug the y in between here. This is going to be a negative 31y plus 1491. And we have it in the form ax plus by plus c. So this is the only extra step, is that you, when you have y equals mx plus c, you always start with y equals mx plus c, and then you end up with the other form. Um, and you get rid of the fraction by cross multiplying and then moving your um, y to the other side. Um, now the y equals mx plus c is called the gradient intercept form and the ax plus by plus c is called the general form. Um, just be aware what the question is asking you to do. If you're not comfortable with the general form, you can stick to the y equals mx plus c form. Um, and this is it. I'm going to stick with this one example and you can try going through more examples or even try the solved example from your book.